Welcome everyone. This is Janice Deloy with OHUG. We're happy to have you here with OPKEY and they're gonna be talking about um, the AI powered auto testing. Um, I think AI is one of our most exciting and coolest topics that we, we offer. And uh, it'll be exciting to hear how AI plays a role in, in auto testing. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Dimpy and Isabel, to introduce yourselves. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Janice. It's great to be here. Um, we at OpKey just love collaborating with the whole OHUG team and everyone that we get to meet through you. So thank you again for the coordination. We really appreciate it. Um, for anyone who I haven't met before, had a webinar with before, I'm Isabel Hendricks. I'm the content marketing manager here at OpKey. I'm joined by our own Dimpy Sharma, who is the VP of Product Solutions and is a veritable expert in every way in Oracle testing, HCM testing, and has over a decade of experience on multiple different levels and multiple roles with testing for Oracle. So I'd love to hear her talk about it because she's not just talking about theory, she's talking about proven results that she's seen and worked on. So again, Dimpy, thank you for your time. Um, so a little about what we're going to be talking about today. We are here for AI-powered auto-testing, Unleash the Power of Your People. We're going to be talking specifically about how AI can enhance testing processes for Oracle HCM. And we know at this point you've heard so much about AI. There's so much hype and speculation, but we always say here at OpKey we like to keep it grounded in practical and tangible results. So we're not just going to be telling you a bunch of things we hope could happen. We're going to be sharing real and practical experiences that we're seeing and experiencing in our AI-driven platform specifically for Oracle testing. Um, we'll go over benefits, we'll go over common challenges, we'll go over different phases of the te testing life cycle that AI can apply to. Um, and overall, we just wanna give you a sense of what's changed since most of these advances are very new um, and what's possible, especially for HCM. So a couple of housekeeping things, this is being recorded. Um, so don't worry if you feel you miss anything. If you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We can get to them in real time or there will be a Q&A section at the end. And um, if you have any questions that feel very specific to your instance or your company, please reach out to sales at opkey.com or go ahead and go to the OpKey website, www.opkey.com um, to get a demo and we'd be happy to help you and give you any answers you might need. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Dimpy. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Janice. And thank you so much everyone for uh, making the time today. Um, yeah, so we're gonna talk about auto testing with the uh, AI and how we can really save um, couple of things, right? From an automation perspective, best practices, time, some of the key time in really learning about the overall um, platform and the overall system that you're currently working on, learning about what changed, le learning about the overall um, processes, screens, anything that you want to learn from an ERP perspective, right? So we're going to look at how um, that's kind of getting embedded to our ERP platform and what's changing. We all know there are a lot of changes that come and specifically from an HCM standpoint, a lot of, lot of changes hit that particular module for some reason, whether it is Redwood, whether it is responsive UI, uh, anything that comes new um, just becomes part of that particular module and essentially because that's the, the major module that drives changes and is directly proportional to the people that we deal with, right? It's an human capital module that kind of pretty much deals with all the all the folks that we work with within our organizations and those are, those are the actual users that use the system so it that becomes important we're also going to talk about these practical um strategies that we are building into the erp system there's there's one part and uh it's one way of using ai on on an overall scheme of things where it can look at a repository and generate results but there's absolutely another part where it looks at the system, which is highly configurable, as complex as an uh, Oracle ERP system that's run for different large business organizations, but at the same time is able to integrate and kind of connect with multiple things and give you a result which is more prone, and more closer to anything that a human would uh, derive, right? We'll also talk about some of the case study um, uh, with one of the largest um, organizations, Northwell Health, 
from a healthcare in perspective, also from the number of employees that it has, or from a people perspective, also it's very, very large. So it will make sense how they have utilized um, uh, where the primary application on the ERP business organization was HCM. Right? So it all made sense to kind of talk about that, that particular module. So these are the things that we're going to cover, but essentially you are going to uh, go away with some of the big AI, AI initiatives that we have uh, introduced into the automated testing and how that helps overall. Uh, overall, from a benefits perspective, I think we, we all have different views um, only because it's advanced, but from a practical standpoint, it's, it's at a, a more exploration stage, at, I would say, right? We have been talking about it. We've been hearing about it for a long time. And uh, it seems to kind of boom and get into the industry like pretty fast. But I would really uh, debate on having people looked at the practical execution of it, right? Everybody has their own versions. What we see very practically getting into an ERP system, this would, um, this would do is look at stuff that... Um, and, and essentially two parts to it, right? I mean, one is more uh, ML-based, algorithm-based part of AI that can assess stuff when, which are connected to the algorithms and give results which are like more accurate from an um, uh, algorithm perspective, really understanding that. And another one obviously is the, is the model um, uh, AI, which is uh, absolute deriving from anything that you instruct and train, and then it can, then create and surprise one of the different efficiencies and different tasks that you ask that particular platform to do. So um, for all who have looked at OpKey and how we work, there's one essential part of our, uh, the way we generate tests and the way we um, perform testing in an automated fashion is using process mining as a traditional aspect of technology at the back end, which means that it assesses what's going on into the system and then derives the test cases based on that. So that's pretty critical to us. And when we say that, a lot of algorithms right here become very, very important. Um, these are algorithms at the back end which connect to the BI reports and then generate these, uh, connect these different tables and generate these test results. And that's the reason th those are accurate. When you have AI built into that, there are multiple instructions that you can do from the front end, which directly connects and saves significant amount of time while you're into your implementation phase, while you're into your, your change phase, while you're into your post-implementation phase, any phase of your cycle that helps immediately. For example, you could um, be you could be implementing something on a BR uh, 100 in a manual way, and you could instruct the, the platform saying that, can you generate these um, certain test cases from the BR 100, that's one. Can you um, use this particular business unit and create all the different combinations of my test scenarios? That's again, how do you um, give all the relevant data combinations to my test scenario that it actually execute these tests in a more efficient fashion? So you could use AI in all of these different aspects. Another key aspect would be a lot of um, stuff that you do from a manual testing perspective. You um, execute the tests, you combine the tests, you put certain prerequisites, you change them regularly, you put them on for execution, um, debugging, troubleshooting, re-execution, data changes, all of that is part of some of these manual efforts that's also inclusive while you're running the test automation engagement overall. So that, it, it's it's significant, right, on, the, on executing the test cycles, uh, on overall, uh, test coverage, when you have an assessment built at the algorithm stage, it's easier to identify and generate test cases in in, in bulk to kind of cover uh, all the aspects of that particular functionality, just to ensure comprehensiveness. So it's just that making sure that at every place, and it, it's all about simplifying, right? And there's, uh, there's one example I keep quoting, but it's very, very relevant, especially on the uh, EPM side of the house where, where you're, you're able to, or any kind of an analytics, even in ERP, even in HCM, uh, any kind of analytics as you are part of, you see that particular um, analytics on the report, but it's, it's really relevant to have the same analytics understood by 
your chartered accountant as it is to be understood by your intern can they both understand the same analytics it's when you kind of simplify that from a gen ai perspective just simplify that particular analytics and give it in in that particular simplified simplified form and then a platform that can consume all of that information and then generate results and documentation and validation reports to that particular level so we are working to kind of integrate everything from a gen ai perspective to that level so that that model can give you not only results faster that you are instructing or creating tests and suites at different levels that you are uh, expecting but also making sure that it simplifies some of these efforts which are very critical from a business analyst perspective what are we solving overall um one big aspect is test maintenance right when you uh, at the initial bit when you when we on board when we make sure that all of these different functionalities are part of the automation cycle and we are executing some of these tests obviously then it it plays a big role but when you get into a maintenance phase that's where there are a lot of uh, activities that actually take the time right there are things like re execution there are things like addition on the test cases on the regression there are things like changes uh, what happens there are things like self healing there are things like uh generating multiple reports sharing multiple reports and and things like that uh or doing multiple executions really tracking to the t when it becomes large uh larger programs at different levels and there are multiple teams operating and a bot which can work more as a analyst right or more as a support engineer uh, ai powered support engineer right that just looks at the overall platform and understands everything and gives the um the solutions or the results right at the right in front of you so that gives an a uh, significant uh, space from a maintenance perspective um from a test coverage perspective again it's very very critical because it could it could look at the algorithms it it could suggest these are the configurations that are newly added as part of your new patch do you want to incorporate you can make that assessments and you can make that those um Uh, decisions while it's in front of you rather than you know setting up calls having humans involved having people involved and really saving time which could have like directly been automated or understood it's just that it is it only can be understood either from a business analyst who understands all of these requirements or a a learned model who could understand all of these requirements right so that's where we're trying to solve these problems a uh, development phase right so if you are if i'm helping a model create the the test cases or generate the test cases for those particular requirements it just significantly increase the test generation time all you have to do is just review validate and that's it uh, execution times most of the execution times obviously from a scheduling and execute execution perspectives but the real time actual goes into looking at each and every execution right so for example you have five different operating units at one particular point and um multiple teams that are working at one particular point and there are multiple uh, meetings that are uh, going on at one particular point choosing um at that point or getting all the different results and then putting it into the status and the execution sheets or connecting it with the test management tools and making sure that that is updated all of that is significant while while the program is running um predicting defects so again this is um i mean obviously cannot cannot stress it enough at the time of the patch or at the time of the release uh, a bigger issue that comes up is that to assess something which is part of the configuration or something which is part of the patch you've read it you've made sure that's part of the documentation it's just about analysis and as i said an ai powered business analyst working for you could tell you that these are the defects that are part of that patch or this 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 one really needs to be scheduled uh for an or oracle uh, sr and things like that all of that could be uh part of an ai business analyst that can do that particular job so this is um hope this clarifies right so these are critical items that we're trying to solve from an ai enabled test automation from an hcm post perspective uh i would tell you whenever there are 
uh, testing scenarios that are part of the business process. A bigger issue that always comes on an HCM particular standpoint is the configurations are significant and that it cannot be tested alone via the configuration data or alone via the transaction data. It always has to be merged between the two. You have to collaborate between the transaction data, the type of employees that are created from a transaction data perspective, plus the configurations that are set up in the, into the system. Combine those and you get a relevant test data set that should be part of the test scenario and test script and your data set, which means to simplify, it, it means that you have to execute a test script, which is which uses all the different combinations that are relevant for that particular business process to be executed. For example, all the different types of employees with different conditions. This employee who's hired in this particular month, which X benefit uh, is able to do these X, Y, Z jobs. Then all the permutations and combinations of that. Right? So those are the stuff that is very, very critical. HDL or an end-to-end -end integration or the payroll getting integrated to a third party and end-to-end -end management across different um, worksheets, applications, um, all of that integration from a part of an accelerator and part of from test automation platform is again, very critical. It's again, very um, practical to have a bot assess what are the different APIs that are broken from an inbound um, perspective. You could look at that particular inbound APIs. It could Im immediately suggest you um, hey, these are the APIs that are broken, but you m might have to look at these APIs because these are probably deprecated in this particular patch and things like that. When you look at scale uh, from a documentation perspective or the patch cycles that you have uh, gone about and you come from, it's really hard to kind of go into each and every note and understand each and every background from a uh, historical perspective. Here's a bot that could just as, as I said, that could just become your support engineer or that could just become your BA who could really guide at that particular point what the, what's the right step. And that's why I say that uh, accuracy, uh, more than efficiency, accuracy and something which is more conditional and helps you in making those better decisions in the next phase, it's very, very critical. With that, um, how do we do it is from a change perspective is also very important. Right, um, uh, this big problem that we're trying to solve is um, just from a compliance perspective, right? Security, making sure that the production is up and running, making sure that all the implementation specialists, the way the configurations are being modified and changed and the real system is being um, touched upon or, or modified is working as expected, right? One of the critical areas. How do you validate that is making that change. And how you make sure that the change is seamless is when you heal. When you heal and when you heal automatically and when you assess these real-time changes is when a, a bot immediately can understand, okay, these are the changes that have happened, is learned through the algorithms that have been working on that particular module and that particular platform, really understands all the combinations. Uh, a one touch, it understands what have changed. It understands how to heal it. All your test scripts are modified. Working when you're not, uh, working when you, these changes have already happened, say in the middle of the night, it can do all of that jobs and then schedule and make sure that all of these critical areas are assessed. Uh, documentation, as I said, generating these documentations, say understanding and creating these different guides, the way they work is an automated process. Um, the way it's different is when these changes happen, again, re-looking at it, again, generating the guides and that happens hundreds of times, all of these test documentations need to come, um, uh, are addressed from an uh, AI bot. Um, easy tracking. We have an internal connected QLM system that actually manages uh, or, or being used for our test management, right? We obviously have an entirely supreme open API architecture to kind of connect with any um, any uh, other or major test management platforms and defect management platforms out there. but um, for just from a tracking perspective, right? Generating different dashboards, really tracking the entire engagement, what's going wrong, where it's, where it's delayed, how the milestones are performing, how the uh, defects are coming on one particular requirement every single time. How, how, do you, how do you assess where the critical areas are being affected? All of that is um, being tracked by uh, an AI 
AI bot, right? So it's tracking becomes a, a significant task that it takes care of. Really best practices from a um, AI features perspective is at the stage of our test discovery, this is used as an ML uh, on the process mining to instantly identify what are the tests you have been running. What's the or ideal test coverage? One of the big use cases where AI gets used, it's immediately uh, that it immediately discovers what you have as part of your configurations at the back end and then generates all the accurate test results that you have been performing plus does a gap analysis. What are the configurations that you have done uh, in the instance versus what are you executing today? So then it assesses based on the configurations that these are the test scenarios that you're not executing at that particular point and that becomes your gap analysis. So that is very, very critical because it immediately gives you a sense of uh, or and practical uh, data of what the coverage looks like today and how it can be extended. Plus, it's also integrated with our end-to-end -end test uh, automation platform, where if you want to integrate it with multiple applications, use it, you can use BPM or you can create an end-to-end -end test from the scratch, or you can use the impact analysis for discovery. And we'll uh, talk about that in a bit. Uh, a bot that can just based on the prompts is immediately able to assess and create these tests or generate these tests, which are automatically or part of the libraries to already and is able to connect some of these tests which are continuously being part of your uh, repository right so if you want to say create a test which is uh, which integrates or has a as a past layer and then just uh, validates your order from the ERP platform to WMS all the time using an OIC integration so it's able to generate a standard test um, obviously it might require some modification but if you set up a prompt, a test case with all of that information immediately gets created, saving you significant amount of time in looking at the business component, looking for the libraries, making the right keywords, putting the right keywords, making the right test and things like that. All of that is generated. So you can just modify and then make sure that the uh, test executes successfully. But from a time uh, perspective, from an efficiency perspective, just the usage of the platform becomes much, much faster. Uh, Dimpy, we have a quick question about creating tests. For Oracle HCM, will we have a set of inbuilt, inbuilt test cases from Opkey readily available? And if so, should we make changes, incorporate changes from Opkey to enable this AI testing? So really two different questions. Pre-built tests and do you need to incorporate changes to enable AI? Um, no, AI is already enabled. I'll take the second one first. AI is already enabled. So um, you, you don't need to incorporate create tests to incorporate AI. AI is already there and no need to incorporate in tests as well. We uh, assess these tests and generate these tests automatically from the libraries that are already available, plus the configurations that are there in the instance and they're what we view, right? So we go into your BI reporting, we use that access, uh, we use process mining at the backend and then we generate these tests. AI is at the back end, and that is going to, and that's the one that's running this algorithm, right? And that's the one that is going to assess the gap or the modifications between these configurations and give you a certain a set of tests on top of it that you can utilize for uh, overall testing. Um, sorry, Isabel, what was the first question? First question? Uh, the first question is, does Opkey provide a set of pre-built tests? Yes. Uh, we have a comprehensive test. I mean, it's a big a pre built set of libraries across all the different modules of ERP, supply chain, HCM, EPM, um, multiple others from an integration perspective. So there are a significant set of pre built libraries that we already have, and that gets integrated, right? So when we talk about process mining and test mining, that gets integrated with the pre built libraries, and that's the reason the automation is much faster. All right, coming back, um, these best practices, one of the critical ones again, is uh, the the change impact analysis when we when we look at the changes those are every now and then either our specialists are making or uh, we do these changes from an uh, we, we get these changes from an update perspective and things like that so we're constantly being introduced to a change which means that uh, you, your 
from a testing program perspective, this becomes very, very relevant that you assess these changes and make these changes automatically or uh, modify these test scripts that are already part of your system automatically. So these are ML algorithms that run at the back end. How the changes are assessed? What are the different fields that needs to be incorporated? What's the right keyword to put in the test script so that the test uh, self-healing happens? All of that is automatically done using the, the impact analysis and self-healing. So these are some of the key areas where we use and it just becomes critical um, in one of these, one of the complex modules, which is HCM. How do we make it uh, more, more effective through your entire test protocols is you just embed and imbibe these changes that uh, that are coming, as I said, these, this is being talked upon, but as early you adopt it from a data generation perspective, from a test case generation perspective, it's all about incorporating and getting ahead from a, a testing program and an overall life cycle perspective, even in your SDLC um, or, a, or a, you know, Vigile methodology at this point, it's very important to get it as early as, as, as possible. Uh, and use GenAI for test case generation, use it for the test, uh, generating a test repository, using it for linking to the test management platform or linking it with the overall end-to-end -end reporting platform or uh, just having the all the documentations in place and just making sure that all the uh, manual tasks are in place is something that we are looking for uh, from an efficiency standpoint. Plus, even more important than that is accuracy. This is one of the key examples. I've been uh, talking about it and how it really utilizes and, and helps in the overall scheme of things. Test discovery is one of the greatest examples of uh, using the, the AI models and then generating these test cases, right? So we are able to assess what's happening into the system using process mining as a technology, generating these tests and then assessing gap. As soon as we look at the configurations, we are able to assess this is something that you're not testing and that, that means this is the gap analysis that will cover uh, and make sure that your tests are completely covered and you have a good coverage from an overall testing standpoint. So that's a big, big plus from the overall gap analysis. We would also love to talk about our case study with Northwell Health. Um, this, how they utilize test discovery, how they utilize the overall impact analysis and self-healing platform that's AI powered. And that's um, that utilizes this, as I said, a business analyst, an AI-powered business analyst from a platform perspective who could uh, assess, minimize the change uh, to the business, and then take care of the overall testing engagement. We'll talk about more here. As a customer, uh, as an organization, Northwell Health had Oracle HCM, as I said, they have uh, thousands of employees, one of the largest ones in the in the geography where they were struggling with, and they have a big practice of Oracle Cloud HCM. They were struggling with change, multiple resources working on the HCM and the end-to-end -end business processes, technical resources, the, the BSAs, and they didn't want them to kind of work on something which was recurring, uh, being done every now and then. There were multiple SMEs across different, different uh, places and different disciplines that were part of this particular change, every update. And due to, due to limited time of their IT and business teams, they would not utilize all the different enhancements and push out all the different uh, enhancements during the cloud updates, which means that they would defer most of their enhancements for a later time. Big impact on the overall business. They were never on time. They were never current with the overall quarterly patch updates. And that's the biggest problem that we were solving for them. Utilize the platform. Test discovery was a major, major game changer for them. Uh, impact analysis and self-healing was another big boon that they could assess the changes right on time. They could make sure that the changes that have been done on the test scripts were prioritized, making sure that the production was immediately risk-free, right? So these were um, the big, big pluses, big positives that they achieved. Uh, another big issue was uh, just because people already have squeeze timelines, the assessment on the enhancements and then making sure that the testing was on point and it was 100% covered uh, from a platform perspective, from, from a, a testing perspective with, with folks was really difficult. And that's where they increased that they assessed from about 40% to more than 80%, right? About 85%. And that was again, a big plus. And we were glad they were able to achieve that. 
um, utilizing the entire two weeks for testing and patch, that was reduced from two weeks to three days. Now all the patch, patches for them are certified in just three days. So their release updates are faster. They are enabling more enhancements. They are able to reduce the overall efforts. They are able to make sure that they have a documentation, an entire repository of uh, documentation and constant documentation and audit trail from a compliance perspective because the documentation and the validation reports are so comprehensive. Happy to receive it from them. And really, I think this is what we talk about and we can't stress enough um, how the business is in risk because of these changes and how much we'd want that validation before we actually go to production as an instance. And we need to have a platform in place that takes care of all our different interfaces, all our different business processes. And overall, from an end-to-end -end perspective, it, it kind of takes care of the overall coverage. Uh, that talks about the overall efficiency, testing efficiency. Uh, these analytics could be used on process optimization as well, but testing efficiency really focused on the gaps and the change assessment is the bigger focus right now. And what we are heading towards is a, a AI powered engine that could take care of the test case generation, maintenance and save time on tracking and making sure that everything which is um, really recurring and uh, taking away time from a manual perspective is uh, taken care of. Time for questions. Please feel free to put your questions in the question box. Thanks so much, Dimpy. We'll take a few questions now. If anyone wants to add any more, please pop them in the box. All right. Can you speak a little more about AI for test creation? I don't understand how written commands could input a test to Oracle. Sure. Uh, there are two aspects to it not only written commands, right? So the one aspect is uh, into the test discovery, which is using the process mining at the back end. So that's generating test. So those are algorithms based uh, ML and the AI powered engine that's working at the back end from an algorithm perspective to generate tests. On the front end, it's more about generating or giving that prompt, which could give you the right tests that have been generated. So it's a mix of ML um, and the algorithms and then the prompts of AI, right? So AI is being used at two places, one as a chatbot, another one as the algorithms. That's one uh, from a test creation perspective. And then analysis again goes to the algorithms to understand if the test cases are created, are they created in a comprehensive way? So that means you have to do a gap analysis. That's again limited to or connected to the uh, uh, overall bot and the overall algorithm that's behind. I hope that clarifies. Wonderful, thank you. <clears throat> um, and a question about impact analysis. This obviously seems, uh, the question says, this obviously seems more effective than human testers, but is, it, but is impact analysis really necessary as part of test automation? Very necessary. It would not be necessary if we were doing these modifications and changes every two years. But if we are modifying the system every quarter or every month in some of the uh, cases, it becomes very, very relevant, right? Even leave alone the patch changes. If you're making the change just from the com configuration perspective, right? How would you assess what is the impact on my other processes? You would have to test or even if manually, leave alone uh, automation platform, even manually, we'll have to modify the processes that are connected to the configurations that we are changing, right? So if you're touching the setup or if you're modifying any kind of configuration at any point in time, it's really important to look at the change because that's going to immediately give you an uh, idea of what are the different areas and what are the different processes that are affected because of that particular change. So you're all the time like easy, right? You can, uh, you're then making an informed decision of, okay, this is breaking. These are the changes that have happened. I have to move, validate this. And then you can run a automated platform to look at what has changed and how the defects would come because it will immediately go and execute. Gotcha. <clears throat> Thank you. Well said. Um, we have another question here. Will this kind of testing cover the customized BI reports slash OCI reports testing? This um, connects with the BI reporting, which has the standard reports and the customized reports. Um, I'll say the standard reports isn't like the standard BI reports, right? 
and the customizations Oracle Cloud does not allow a lot of customizations. Those are part of configurations. So those configured results are uh, results are also part of our overall uh, platform. I hope that helps. Lovely, thanks. Um, we have another question. How is this AI built? OCI Gen AI is being used or OpKeys developed AI from scratch or is this integrated with any third party AI? This is OpKey's own AI. This is not uh, integrated with Oracle's uh, Oracle's Gen AI. We would be in the near future um, where we would be integrating and then generating algorithms and results and it would be very, very interesting. At this point, no. Uh, Misty says, I missed the first few minutes of the call, so maybe this was already done, but an example or demo would be helpful. So yeah, we no. typically demo um today we had a time constraint but misty i'd encourage you to check out opkey's website we have a variety of video demos as well or reach out directly and we can provide you with any firsthand demo you might want uh we have time for one more question vj asks does this also help in fast formula level updates and testing of the balance dimension yes it does it does fast formula level uh, conditions are part of our test scenarios that get converted into uh, like different test scenarios and test data sets and those are executed yes nice and we'll take one more that just came in um, does this also support the payroll data validation for the quarter and year end processing and an analysis while filing taxes and w2 yeah w2 is included uh, payroll validation every quarter yes that's included as well um, so yes we incorporate all of these changes I mean, these validations and these uh, data validations at every uh, stage at, at different uh, you know cycles is very important. Wherever there is change, wherever there is these cycles and releases that are immediately part of our solution. Absolutely. All right, folks, that's all we have time for today. I want to go ahead and give another big thank you and shout out to Ohug and Janice um, and Dimpy as well for your time. Please don't be shy. Be in touch with our team. We love answering these questions, giving demos, walking you through anything you might want to know. Um, and everyone have a safe and great day.